What's up my stats stars? In this video, we're gonna walk through how to conduct a two sample Z test for difference between two population means on your TID4 calculator. This is gonna make the work so fast, especially if it's a multiple choice question where you don't have to show the work, but an FRQ, it's gonna help you get your P-value and your Z score, or your, excuse me, T-score really, really quickly. All right, let's quickly review the steps for a two sample test. First, we gotta name the hypotheses and make sure that that's in context, right? This is a two sample T test, the difference between, and then fill in the blank there. Next, we gotta check the conditions for that sampling distribution. And then third, this is what we're gonna actually use the calculator to do all of our work for us. We're gonna find that T-score and the P-value. And then the fourth is we're gonna make that conclusion based on that P-value. Now, we should be very, very familiar with this. So what I wanna focus on this video is how to use your calculator. So here's the example we're gonna talk about. Basically, we're looking at, do people who exercise frequently have lower resting heart rates than those who do not? So investigate this, we get 10 people who exercise regularly, and we get their mean, we get their standard deviation of that group, we actually have all the data here. And then for a group of eight random people who do not exercise regularly, we have their data as well, we have their resting heart rates, and then we have the mean for that group and the standard deviation. So does this provide significant evidence that people who exercise have lower resting heart rates than those who do not at the 1% significance level? All right, so step one is again, stating this is a two sample t-test for the difference between the mean resting heart rates of people who exercise and people who do not. The alternative is that the mu, the mean for the people who exercise, is, well, no different than the mean for the people who do not. And the alternative is what we're wondering, is the mean heart rate, resting heart rate for those that exercise, definitely less than those that do not. All right, the conditions, not a ton of fun, I know, but we've got to go through all those conditions. Got to be random samples to avoid bias. Because we are randomly selecting our samples from the population, this was not an experiment, we do need to make sure that they were both under 10% of the population to assume independence, and, well, Neither sample is over 30, so we would have to take a quick look at that data and make sure there's no major outliers, no major skewness. All right, here comes the fun part. This is the part where we're going to let the calculator do all of our work. Now, in general, the test statistic is going to be that T-score, right? And that T-score will be found by taking our observed difference. This was the difference that we observed between our two groups. We saw that the group that exercises has 19.525 less beats per minute on average than the other group. And we're gonna subtract the parameter, which is zero. That came from the null hypothesis. And we're gonna divide by the standard error of the sample statistic there. And again, that stand, standard error form is on the formula sheet. But here's the great thing. We're gonna let the calculator do all of this for us. All we gotta do is grab our calculator. We're gonna go stat, slide over to test, and we're looking for two sample T tests. Now, if you're wondering why we're using a t-test instead of a z-test, it's mainly because the standard deviations that were given to us are the standard deviations of the sample and not the population. If for some reason we knew the standard deviation of the population, we could actually do a two-sample z-test. Now, when we click on this, we can either enter the data, which we actually have, so we could do it that way, but we also have the statistics from that table I showed you earlier. So I'm going to make sure I click on stats, and I'm going to go down and put everything in. So one is going to be my exercise group. So this was 60.1 was their mean. The standard deviation was 7.0309. And the sample size for those that exercise was 10. Again, just filling all this in that was given to me in that table. All right, for the second group, that's going to be my non-exercises. Their mean was 79.625. Their standard deviation was 4.9839. And their sample size was only 8. Now, whoop, I put that 8 in the wrong place. There it is, eight. Now, this is the really important part. We gotta make sure we put the right hypotheses in here. Our alternative was that we think the exercise mean is less than the non-exercise. So we use the number one to signify our exercise group. So we want mu one to be less than, so we gotta make sure we select the less than mu two. We do not pull when we're working with means, and we're gonna go and hit calculate. And boom, there is the T-score that I got, negative 6.8824. And then there is the P-value that we need as well. And uh, make sure you pay attention to that E to the negative 6 right there. A lot of kids don't pay attention to that. That means we got to move the decimal six times to the left. So that's going to produce 0 0.00000195.
And again, that's a pretty low P value. Now, I want to remind you one little thing here, degrees of freedom. Now, there is a really ugly degrees of freedom formula, and that's how they actually got the degrees of freedom here, 15.82799. But if you're going to do this by hand, you could actually use one of two options. You could use the smaller of the two degrees of freedom. So the first sample had nine degrees of freedom, 10 minus one. The other sample had seven degrees of freedom. So we'd use seven degrees of freedom, the smaller of the two. Or you could add your two degrees of freedom together. So if we take seven plus nine, we would get 16 degrees of freedom. But again, both of those are actually wrong towards the correct degrees of freedom that you get. But again, all I'm trying to say is if you do it by hand, you might get slightly different numbers than the calculator, but the calculator is going to do everything perfect. So again, instead of you having to do all this work by hand to get this T score or this P value, well, the calculator could do it all for you. Now, I want to let you know, keep in mind that you might say, well, your number's a little bit different than mine. You're right, they are, and that's mainly because of those degrees of freedom. The calculator's going to be way more accurate, but it should never be so far off that you have a completely different conclusion. So, doing it by hand, you might get a slightly different p-value, but ultimately you'll be okay. If you're using the calculator like I'm trying to teach in this video, you're going to get the best p-value. Now we want to use that p-value to make our conclusion. So since that p-value 0.00000195 is less than 0.01, I'm going to reject an all. There is significant evidence that the mean resting heart rate of people who exercise regularly is lower than the mean resting heart rate of people who do not exercise regularly amongst those that were um, in these samples. So hopefully that makes sense. Not too bad, but the calculator can make this so much easier for you to get that t-score and that p-value and that's what they want to see on the ap exam for step three but don't forget about all the other steps where you do have to do some writing and showing those hypotheses and especially a conclusion make sure that it's written in context